Welcome to Academic Guru's Tutoring Tuesday, where we answer all of your high school, college, and university questions. If you would like your question to be featured on next week's Tutoring Tuesday, please submit your questions to questions at academicgurusinc.com. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay current with all of our new videos. Today I'll be solving a histogram question that was sent in to us. Uh, but before delving into that question, I'll actually start off with a review because I find that a lot of students are confused about the difference between a histogram and a bar graph, as well as the difference between a frequency histogram and a frequency density histogram. So I thought it might be helpful to break this into a two-part series. So today I'll touch on part one, where I'll solve a frequency histogram question, and I will review the difference between a frequency histogram and a bar graph. And then uh, part two will touch on the difference between a frequency histogram and a frequency density histogram. So stay tuned for that. All right, so we'll get started with the review. So here I have an example of a bar graph, which is measuring the frequency of t-shirt sizes ordered. You can see that there are three different types of sizes. We've got medium, small, and large. And then we've also got a frequency table below. Just by looking at this bar graph, as well as the frequency table, we can tell that the largest number of orders were placed for the medium-sized t-shirts. Now, here I have an example of a frequency histogram that is measuring the frequency of students' midterm grade percentages. We also have a frequency table that lists various ranges of midterm grade percentages and their corresponding frequencies. By looking at the histogram, we can see that the majority of the students achieved a midterm grade in the range of 60 to 80 percent and fewer students achieved grades within the ranges of 0 and 20 percent and 90 to 100 percent. Now, if we compare the bar graph to the frequency histogram, we can see that there are a few distinct differences. One being that in the case of the bar graph, it measures qualitative or categorical data. So we're dealing with t-shirt sizes, um, colors or anything that can be placed into a category. By contrast, a frequency histogram measures quantitative or continuous data, so anything that can be measured, such as temperature for example. The bars that you see in a bar graph actually represent categorical variables, whereas in a frequency histogram, the bars, or which we also refer to as class, are a range of quantitative values. Generally, but not always, you'll find that adjacent bars are separated by spaces in the case of bar graphs, while in the case of frequency histograms, adjacent bars are connected without spaces, which reflects the quantitative or continuous nature of the data. In both the case of the bar graph as well as if the frequency histogram, the height of the bars corresponds to the respective frequencies. And this is a major distinction between a frequency histogram and a frequency density histogram, which we'll touch on in part two of the series. And lastly, in the case of the bar graph, bars are generally arranged in order of decreasing heights by convention, whereas in the case of a frequency, the order of the bars cannot be changed because they're continuous. And we can see this to be true when we compare the two graphs. In the case of the bar graph, you can easily rearrange medium versus small versus large without changing the meaning of the bar graph. But if you take a look at the frequency histogram, you can't rearrange uh, 10 versus 90, for example. It wouldn't make any logical sense. Okay, so now that we've reviewed the difference between a bar graph and a frequency histogram, we can go on and solve the histogram question that was sent in to us. So the question reads, Dr. Freeman is a dentist in the local community. 
The data set below lists the ages of his current patients who are covered under a certain insurance plan. And there we have a list of ages. And part A of the question asks us to decide how many bars you will include in the histogram, list the range of the bar values and corresponding frequencies in the table, Remember that each bar should contain the same number of values. You may also leave some rows blank or add more rows depending on the number of bars your histogram will contain. All right, so let's start with part A by deciding how many bars we will include in our histogram. I think the easiest way to approach this is to actually organize the ages from the youngest age to the oldest age because with what we've been presented here there's really no order to those numbers. So what I've done here is to arrange the ages from youngest to oldest and the reason behind that is that you can clearly see uh, that the ages span from 5 years old up to 53 years old. There are different rules that you can apply to help guide you in deciding how many bars to include in your histogram, such as Sturgis rule. Or Rice's rule. But in the end, you want to break the numbers down in a way that is meaningful to you. So you don't want too many bars where it becomes difficult to see any trend or pattern in the histogram. And you also don't want too few bars where any trends or patterns are no longer distinguishable. So in our case, I've decided to break the histogram into groups of 10. Um, I think when we are dealing with insurance, you may want to compare children versus young adults versus adults and so on. That might be something that becomes meaningful to you uh, as an analyst, for example. So here you can see I've divided the ages into groups of 10. We've got age 5 up to but not including 15, 15 up to but not including 25, 25 up to but not including 35, and so on and so forth. The main thing to note here is that by convention, the ranges here signify that the values include the starting number, in this case 25, all the way up to 35, but ending just before 35. So we would include people who are perhaps one day or even one month short of being 35 years old, but not 35 years old. So that's the distinction. To calculate the corresponding frequency, you're pretty much tallying up the ages that fall into the range specified. So for example, in the case of the range between 25 up to but not including age 35, we would include ages 24, 25, 26, 31, 32, 34, and 34. So six of them, and therefore I have uh, the corresponding frequency of six. Another example, let's take the age range between 45 up to 55 years of age. In this case, only numbers 48 and 53 fall into this range, and therefore the frequency is 2. So again, the frequency is really just a count of the number of ages that fall into the respective ranges. So now that we have decided on how many bars to include in our histogram, listed the range of the bar values, and the corresponding frequencies, we can move on to part B, which asks us to draw a histogram to represent a data set. It also requires that we include a table, uh, labels indicating the bar value along the x-axis, labels for the bar height values along the y-axis, and bars drawn to the appropriate heights. So here, I've taken our frequency table and used the data to transform it into a frequency histogram. I started off by labeling the y-axis with the title frequency. I labeled the x-axis ages of patients. 
I've given the frequency histogram a title, ages of patients covered under insurance. I've created bars or columns that correspond to the different ranges in our frequency table. So you can see that for range 5 to 15, there's a corresponding bar in the histogram. The same is true for 15 to 25 and so on and so forth. So the histogram essentially becomes a visual representation of the data you collected in your frequency table. You can readily see that the majority of patients covered under the insurance plan fell in the range of ages 25 to 45 years of age. Fewer of the patients fell in the age range between 45 and 55 years of age. And you can readily see this by comparing the heights of the different bars, which reflect the difference in frequency, such that the lower the bar, the lower the frequency, and the higher the bar, the greater the frequency. So there you are. Thank you for tuning into our Tutoring Tuesday channel. If you enjoyed watching this video and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. We would love to hear from you. Until next week's Tutoring Tuesday, happy studying.